भगवत से भगवत्युत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ठी कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंदगोपकुमाय गोविंदय नमो नम ओम अज्ञानतिरा ज्ञाजनाशलाखया चक्षुरोन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददाती स्वदाक वंदेह श्रीगुरो श्रीयुतापकमल श्रीगुरोन वैष्णवांश श्रीरूप सागर जाता सह गण रघुनाथ तम सजीव साधवैत सवधूत परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पद सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखान्ता नमा ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी निधिनामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चातरिणे नमो महाबदान्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदाय ते कृष्णा कृष्ण चैतन्य नाने गौरत्षे नम हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानो सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाछाकलतरूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम राम हरे हरे सर्वशास्त्राधि पीयूष सर्वेदक सत्फल सर्व सिद्धांत रनाढ़ सर्वोकैक दृक्प्रद सर्वभागवत प्राण श्रीमद्भागवत प्रभो कलिद्वादिता श्रीकृष्ण पिवर्ति परमानंद पाठाय प्रेम वर्षाक्षराय ते सर्वदा सर्वसेव्याय श्रीकृष्णा नमोस्तु मे मदेक बंधो मत्संगीन मद्गुरो मन महाधन मन निस्तारक मद्भाग्य मदानंद नमोस्तु ते असाधु साधुतादाई अति नीचोच्च तारक पान मुंच कदा चिन्मा प्रेम नारथकंठयोस्फुर श्रीमद्भागवत महापुराण की हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण सो वेलकम ऑफ यू इन टूडे सेशन वी कंटिन्यू अवर डिस्कशन फ्रॉम सेकेंड कैंटो फ्रॉम वेर वी एंडेड वी विल प्रोसीड टू डे सो आई सीक द ब्लेसिंग ऑफ ऑल द डिवोटीज टू बी एबल टू स्पीक ऑन श्रीमद्भागवतम so i uh, would just like to begin with a quick recap of yesterday's discussion i would just uh, request two devotees from on site and two from online to speak anybody who wants to volunteer what we discussed yesterday any any points any sections that you remember uh, what did we discuss yesterday so please uh, raise hands uh, those of you who want to tell something from yesterday's discussion on online devotees also can raise hands via the zoom and uh, share what did we discuss yesterday just yes, prabhu is there a mic or mm -hmm. yesterday prabhu ji we were discussing uh, how uh, um, sukhdev goswami was so overwhelmed that uh, he did not recite uh, the mangala charan and he di directly started appreciating his question parishit maharaj's question because of three reasons that it was lokahitam it was beneficial to everybody and uh, it was uh, atmavit samata it was also approved by uh, learned scholars and uh, there was a third reason as well lokahitam approved by translator and it is the highest subject matter to be heard yes shrota vyadishu yah para that was the yes so that is right yes thank you prabhu anyone else 
wants to share what did we discuss? So we were discussing about the Grihastha and Griham Medhi. So we were giving the definition given by Bhakti Siddhanta Saras Thakur. That Medhi means uh, pole and Griha is not exactly the house, but uh, wife because Brahmachari is also staying in house. So he said that for Brahmachari that is Mathastha or Matha Medhi. So that means like one is attached to the uh, facilities of the mat or not rendering the service as per the uh, given by the authorities and other examples like that. Grihastha and Grihamedi, that is standard meaning. It is there in Puranas, it is there in Smritis also. Prabhupada quotes Grihastha and Grihamedi. But Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati interestingly coined the term Mathastha and Mathamedi also. That is what I was saying. Grihastha Grihamedi is there everywhere. Griheshu Grihamedi now, like that. But he also spoke on that aspect. Yes. So, Medhi is not uh, desirable, Stha is desirable, whether Graha or Matha, whatever it is, but Stha is desirable. Okay, fine. Anyone from online? Karuna Murthy Prabhu, Swayam Prakash Prabhu. Yesterday, we were uh, discussing about the uh, Asat Sainya that uh, uh, how they try to do the war. What is the war? War with the time, that is the Kala. And uh, also you are like uh, uh, you are mentioning that how the Tesham Pramatto Nidhanam, that how like uh, they are uh, the previous, all the generations they have passed away, but still they keep a hope that okay, like no, they are not going to understand it and they keep, I'll just try to fight with this time and I'll try to win over. So regarding that you are uh, discussing. Okay, thank you. Mani Krishna or Prabhu? Mani Krishna or Prabhu? Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Ah. Prabhuji, you were telling that uh, yesterday, Sukhdev Goswami, he, he was waiting only for 10 minutes in some house. But due to Lord's mercy, he was ready. Like, Parikshit Maharaj was so fortunate that he got his association for 7 days and 7 nights. So, it was arranged by Lord. Yes, it was arranged by Lord's inspiration, and that is how he hinted that Parikshit uh, Shukdev would be speaking on Lord Krishna. Yes, okay. So, thank you, Prabhu, for sharing uh, some of the points. So, yesterday we began, yes, this discussion. Uh, Shukdev Goswami appreciating the questions of Parikshit Maharaj. And then in three, uh, three shlokas, we heard about how he first spoke about, what did? Vibariyaya. First, he spoke, spoke about Bruhi Yadva Viparyayam. Huh? That uh, he spoke about what is not to be heard, what is not to be remembered, and the life of such people. Sakam Karma Yogis. Huh? Sakam Karmis. Sakam Karma Yoga in Shastra is used for Sakam Karma. Typically, Nishkam Karma Yoga would be the path of yoga. Huh? And anybody who is not a perfected Nishkam Karma Yogi would be called as Sakam Karma Yogi. But when you say Sakam Karma Yoga itself, then it would be Karma Khan, uh, one who is attached to the uh, fruits of the action, like that it is. Uh, so sometimes these terms are used differently also. So Karma Yoga, Sakam Karma Yoga was spoken over there. Uh, Sakam Karma Khan was spoken, Sakam Karma was spoken, you can say, in three verses. So then after this, he spoke about what is to be heard, what is to be remembered, uh, like that. And what is that? Who is to be heard? Hmm? In the text five, he spoke. Yes. Sarvatma Hari Ishwara. Who is that Lord? Whose adjectives are this? Hari is Lord Hari, right? Uh, so Hari is to be heard irrespective of uh, what is the path uh, he is telling that uh, Lord Hari is to be heard, glorified, remembered, worshipped, uh, like that. So we also saw that how Srila Vishwan Chakravarti there gives three meanings of those words, words right? And there is Sarvatma, uh, somebody who desires moksha by bhakti, moksha bhisandhini bhakti. And then there is Bhagavan, which is the somebody who desires the sweetness of Supreme Lord, which is Raganuga Bhakti, and also 
ईश्वर वेर समबडी डिजायर्स आत्मत्राण प्रोटेक्शन बाय द लॉर्ड डेलिवरेंस बाय द लॉर्ड सो ऑल दीज थ्री पीपल आर शोन बाय दिस पर्टिकुलर वर्ड्स सो अकॉर्डिंगली अभयम इच्छता अभयम विल बी आल्सो डिफरेंट अभयम फॉर moksha vesandini is different uh, he wants moksha that is abhayam for a bhakta uh, braganuga bhakta the sweetness of krishna's naam rup guna leela seva that is the abhayam uh, the definition would change in that case like that and similarly for vaidhi bhakta abhayam would mean uh, uh, you know atmatranam it would mean uh, deliverance from uh, the ocean of material existence uh, along with achieving the abode of the lord so that is why for all of them lord hari is to be remembered worshiped uh, this is what he uh, concluded so he is speaking now what is to be heard what is to be remembered straight away conclusion uh, the question which parikshit had asked he is answering it that way straight so now text 6 onwards we will see today just a minute ड्यूटी is to remember the personality of god at the end of life yes so what he spoke just now that lord hari is to be glorified remembered worshiped uh, so is this process of vaishnavas or is this some universal process uh? when you say sarvatma ishvara bhagwan for everybody hari is to be worshiped remembered chanted so it appears like it is uh, specifically for path of vaishnavas uh, or is it that it is a universal process hmm? so he is answering that if that objection were to be raised so he is answering through this verse uh, that this is a universal method etavan sankhya yoga abhyam svadharma parinishthaya ah uh, एतावान पुमसाम परह जन्मलाभ दिस ओनली इज द ग्रेटेस्ट बेनिफिट ऑफ द बर्थ फॉर द मैन फॉर द लिविंग एंटिटीज फॉर द ह्यूमन्स एतावान जन्मलाभ यही जन्म का परम लाभ है किसके लिए पुरुषों के लिए मनुष्यों के लिए दिस इज ओनली द ग्रेटेस्ट बेनिफिट like that hmm. what is that ante narayana smriti uh, that in the end you remember the supreme personality of godhead narayana uh, so what is the meaning of ante there are two different meanings of ante uh, shila shridhar swami gives one which prabhupad follows and uh, shila vishwanath chakravarti gives another meaning which also prabhupad quotes in his purport uh, typically that is how prabhupad he is he in the translation he will usually go ahead with shridhar swami's meaning in the purport he takes shila vishwanath chakravarti's and jeev goswami's meaning and that is how he is uh, his usual right of uh, style of writing is like that so etavan pumsam parah janmalab this is the greatest benefit or the welfare of the birth that is attained by the humans what is that ante narayana smriti that you have narayana smriti at the end uh, you have the constant remembrance of supreme lord as, at the end by them even if those people are not performing just bhakti meaning this is surely true for bhakti but he is saying for sankhya yoga abhyam swadharma parinishthaya 
So are we talking about devotees? Oh, certainly devotees are included only, but he's, he's saying, Shukadev, even Sankhya Yoga Bhyam, uh, those who are following the path of Sankhya, Jnana or Yoga, uh, which is Yoga path, Svadharma Parinishthaya, or those who are following the path of Varnashrama, uh, Nishkam Karma, Nishkam Karma Yoga. So for all these people, he is saying, whether they are following Sankhya or whether they are following Yoga or whether they are uh, Varnashram people, basically for all of them, the greatest benefit that they can secure in their life is Ante Narayana Smriti. If they can remember the Supreme Personality of Godhead at the time of death. Uh, so Srila Sridhar Swami gives the plain meaning of this verse as this means that remembering the Supreme Personality of Godhead at the time of quitting his body. Huh? So he might have practiced throughout his life, but uh, uh, you know it's very important that one is able to give, give up the body, leave the body in the right frame of consciousness. Huh? Krishna also says, right? Antakade chamameva smaran muktva kalevaram yah prayati tadbhavam yah prayat. What is that? Yah prayati sabmadbhavam yati nastyatra samshaya. Yeah, yes. Like that. Yam yam vapi smaran bhavam tejatyante kalevaram tamtam eveti kaunteya sadhatat bhava bhavita. But then, whatever uh, state of being you have at the last point of uh, you know, your life, you attain it. But then, surprisingly, he says, tasmat sarveshu kaleshu ma manusmara yudhyacha ma yarpit mano buddhir ma me vaishya samshaya. Right? So whatever state of being you have at the last point of your life, you will attain that without fail. That is why Sarveshu Kaleshu, Tasmat Sarveshu Kaleshu Mamanus Marayuddich. After saying that, he didn't say, that's why only remember me at the time of death. No, remember me, Sarveshu Kaleshu, always you remember me, he is telling to Arjuna. So meaning, one who is cultivating that kind of remembrance throughout the life, only he will be able to remember, isn't it? It is not some, you know, freak of some memory or like that, that suddenly uh, at the life, uh, at the end moment only. Uh, sometimes somebody may get very exceptional mercy by which uh, some Vaishnava's intervention may happen. But otherwise, uh, Krishna there in the eighth chapter is very clearly telling that Tasmat Sarveshu Kaleshu, that one who is cultivating that remembrance throughout the life, that person will be able to remember the Narayana at the end of their life. Huh? So because even for these people, as we said the other day also, bhakti component is a must. Even if somebody is a jnani, uh, part of jnana is sankhya, uh, analysis of matter and spirit. It's the part of process of jnana yoga. And yoga, uh, you know, meditating on paramatma, so these processes or even nishkam karma, they do have the bhakti element in it. Huh? It has to be bhakti mishra sankhya, bhakti mishra dnyan, bhakti mishra yoga, bhakti mishra karma. Huh? So then only these people are able to achieve their uh, perfection in their own systems like that. Huh? So uh, what it means is actually that all these paths by their, these paths, the person is able to remember the Supreme Personality of Godhead at the end of his life. And then he will be able to achieve uh, their per particular goals uh, because in the Sadhan, Narayan, Lord Narayana's worship is very strong, prominently there even in these paths, uh, like path of Dhyana or path of Yoga, path of Nishkam Karma. The aspects of Shravanam Kirtanam are there in these paths also. Very prominently they are there uh, like that. So unless or until they remember Lord Narayana at the end of their life, they will not be able to achieve the perfection uh, in their own paths for their own respective goals like that. Uh, although they are desiring not necessarily Lord Narayana's association, but they have to perfect their sadhana by remembering him. And then they are able to achieve particular goals like Jnana's goal is moksha, yoga's goal could be moksha or could be other uh, salokyadi moksha and Nishkam Karma's goal is uh, situating oneself on the Atma Jnan uh, realizing that I am not body, I am spirit soul and uh, this aspect. So this is the point. 
ante narayana smriti meaning janmanah ante uh, meaning at the end of his life he should be able to uh, remember the supreme personality of godhead so prabhupad gives that meaning in his translation uh, at the end of the life uh, that is what prabhupad has referred to there is also another meaning to this which uh, shila vishwan chakravarti gives and which prabhupad has referred in his purport uh, in second para he is completely talking on the basis of shila vishwan chakravarti on this particular point so what does vishwanath chakravarti say that here ante means conclude to uh, instead of at the end of life ante means it should conclude in uh, iska ant matlab not the end but conclusion meaning anybody who takes to path of sankhya uh, that is jnana or yoga or nishkam karma actually the real benefit the <clears throat> uh the real uh <clears throat> gain of that particular path is when they you know by the practice of that particular path conclude in actually shuddha bhakti you know they come to the process of shuddha bhakti all these paths if they lead to the process of pure devotion that is he says paral janma lav huh? then their birth has uh, got the greatest gain huh? and their respective paths have got the greatest gain if they come to the conclusion in the sense they come to the path of narayana smriti the path of pure devotional service huh? like that so you see ant here doesn't mean at the end of the life but it means basically ant as they finally uh, come to that conclusion and then they accept this path so then they are not going to go back to dnyan huh? उद्यान का अंत हो गया उसका एंड देन योगा इज एंडेड नाउ ही विल बी प्रैक्टिसिंग ओनली भक्ति दैट इज द पॉइंट सो दिस इज वन अनदर मीनिंग दैट विश्वान चक्रवर्ती इज गिविंग दैट सो दैट इज वाई ऑल दिस पाथ्स आर मेन टू लीड वन टू द प्रोसेस ऑफ भक्ति विच इज प्योर डिवोशनल सर्विस लाइक दैट दैट इज वॉट इज द कंक्लूजन ऑफ ऑल दिस पाथ्स सो ही मे बिगिन विद भक्ति मिश्र ज्ञान but he should end with only bhakti that gyan ka ant hona chahiye wo that gyan should be finished and what remains is only bhakti he he comes to the conclusion of bhakti and accepts it as the path never to again uh, get into gyana or practicing gyana same way with yoga he may begin with bhakti mishra yoga but he should end conclude in bhakti same way with nishkam karma yoga he may begin with that but then he should end with bhakti uh, like that so vishwan chakravarti gives this uh, interesting meaning to the words uh, so prabhupada is referring this in his purport also so please uh, read first prabhupada basically first para he just says narayana paro avyaptat uh, narayana is beyond the material creation and then uh, further he speaks about this meaning read second para by the speculation of empiric philosophy which discerns matter from spirit or by cultivation of mystic powers which ultimately helps the performer to reach any planet of the universe or beyond the universe or by discharge of religious duties one can achieve the highest perfection provided one is able to reach the stage of narayana smriti or constant remembrance of the personality of godhead this is possible only by the association of a pure devotee who can give a finishing touch to the transcendental activities of all gnanis yogis or karmis in terms of prescribed duties defined in the scriptures hmm so that is the point ah huh? prabhupad tells also how this can happen that they will uh, come from gnana to conclusion of bhakti how will it have happen by association ah by association of pure devotees ah huh? like that so if they come in the association of pure devotees then what will happen their bhakti mishra gnana Uh, from there they will turn into gnana mishra bhakti uh, or plain bhakt plain bhakti gnana mishra bhakti can also take one to shantaras uh, so it is also considered pure bhakti only okay but uh, they can be like that shuddha bhakti they can follow shuddha bhakti or bhakti which is pradhani bhuta bhakti uh, bhakti that which is prominently bhakti uh, so that is also called as pure bhakti only so the point over here is uh, this that if they get association of pure devotees and thereby if they come to that exclusive path of narayana smriti 
that's it that is parah janmalab huh? he is saying that is the greatest gain that they can achieve by that particular janma um, in which they were practicing sankhya yoga or like that so are there any examples like that yes so vishwan chakravarti quotes three examples which prabhupada has also quoted in his purport so this is also based on vishwanath's commentary uh, vishwan chakravarti's commentary read further there are there are many historical instances of the achievement of spiritual perfection such as that of the sanakad rishis or the nine celebrated yogendras who attained perfection only after being situated in the devotional service of the lord none of the devotees of the lord ever deviated from the path of devotional service by taking to other methods such as those adopted by the jnanis or yogis everyone is anxious to achieve the highest perfection of his particular activity and it is indicated herein that such perfection is narayana smriti for which everyone must endeavor his best in other words life should be molded in such a manner that one is able to progressively remember the personality of god in every step of life yes so three examples have been given ha huh? sanakadi rishis who were the followers of jnana marga ha huh? but by the association of brahma ji and narada and finally jay vijay they were turned into adnyana mishra uh, bhaktas uh, who are in shantarati uh, so by association of pure devotees they are transformed completely uh. same way another example is of yogendras who were the followers of yoga path uh, but by association of pure devotees they came to the conclusion and practice of pure devotional service similarly third example uh, which prabhupad has not quoted is of prachin barhishat uh, prachin barhi so who was also path who was following which path karmakand he was following sakam karma huh? swadharma parinishtha can mean both sakam karma or nishkam karma so he was following sakam karma and then he got association of whom narad muni and came to the conclusion of bhakti huh? so this is how all these examples are uh, the examples of ante narayana smriti by their sankhya by their yoga by their swadharma parinishtha they actually uh, came to the conclusion of bhakti by the association of great devotees and so that is the uh, that is the greatest gain uh, then prabhupada is further saying this also uh, aspect that that is why he prabhupada says that in life should be molded in such a manner that one is able to progressively remember the personality of godhead in every step of life so literally this line is referring to the other understanding actually where uh, ante narayana smriti means at the end of life so but life should be molded in such a manner that you will not be just like that able to remember uh, supreme personality at the end of life one should mold his life in such a manner that one is able to progressively remember so if you see the last line is actually referring to shridhar swami's meaning uh, that way. before that he is speaking based on vishwanath chakravarti that way. Uh, so this is how the verse is uh, translated in both the fashions hmm? what i'll do is i will take till verse 10 and then pause for questions okay uh, it will complete a theme so then we can take some questions fine text 7 प्राएन मुनयो राजन निवृत्ता विधिषेधत नैर्गुण्यस्थारमते स्म गुणानो कथने हरे किंग परीक्षित मेनली द टॉप मोस्ट ट्रांसेंटलिस्ट हू आर अबो द रेगुलेटिव प्रिंसिपल अंड रेस्ट्रिक्शन टेक् प्लेसर इन डिस्क्राइबिंग द ग्लोरी ऑफ द लॉर्ड so this narayana smriti this narayana smriti is what is seen in the greatest transcendentalists also that is with that purpose he is speaking this words huh? oh you spoke about narayana smriti but are there any examples of that huh? do you see this that narayana smriti is only concluded even they the accepted path of sankhya accepted path of yoga and all that huh? is the narayan smriti uh, the topmost conclusion is it shown also by some uh, examples uh, so he is saying yes in fact those who are the greatest of transcendentalists they are seen 
always taking delight in Lord Krishna's glories. Huh? So this is the conduct of great saintly people that they uh, accept Narayana Smriti, constant remembrance of Supreme Lord as the highest uh, conclusion this way. Or Srila Jeeva Goswami says that this verse is spoken with Kaimutya. Huh? Kaimutya. What does that mean? That even the greatest muktas who are beyond all rules and regulation, even they delight in Krishna's glories. Then what to speak of others? Huh? It is spoken in that sense. Even these people who are, you are saying, uh, is Narayan Smriti the universal uh, conclusion? I am saying the greatest of transcendentalists also take delight in it. So what to speak of it being the uh, you know, recommended path for everyone? Huh? So in that sense, what to speak of others like that? Shriji uh, Vishwanachakrati says that the greatest samsiddhi perfection is to taste Lord's holy names, Nam, Roop, Guna, Leela, Seva, like that. And that taste is so high, huh, that Narayan Smriti is so high, that even people forget the bliss of Brahman. And that is why this verse is being spoken. Huh? So basically these two verses, seven, eight are speak, spoken in sense of, uh, what is the example? What uh, do, do we see this phenomenon that uh, Narayan Smriti is only concluded by their paths? So in that answer to that, basically this he is saying this words. Prayena munayo raja nirvritta nibrutta vidhishedataha. Prayena, O Rajan, O King, Bahuda, meaning generally speaking, actually, generally speaking, even the great munis who are muktas, nibrutta vidhishedataha, they are free from vidhi and shedha. Vidhi and Nished. Uh, so Vidhi Nished kis ke liye hota hai actually? Sadhak ke liye hota hai. It is not for Siddha. They may follow it. Um, they may follow Vidhi Nished, but that is more from setting the example from that particular aspect. They don't need it. Uh, vidhi and Nished is practiced by them. See, basic purpose of Vidhi and Nished uh, is to keep away from contamination and get purified. Uh, develop more and more attachment to the object of uh, one's worship. So that is why always remember Krishna, never forget Krishna. Uh, we say that, right? Sarve vidhi nishedaha eta yo uh, kinkara. So uh, these personalities who are muktas, liberated souls, they are beyond all vidhi nished because they have become siddhas. They have perfected now. They don't have any contamination within their heart. Huh? But even such people who have retired, who have who are above all within Ished, they are seen to be Ramante, they are seen to be taking delight in what Gunanu Kathane Hare in the glorification of Lord Hari. They are also taking delight. Why are they taking delight? Is it that they want to be purified of contamination by hearing Krishna? But they are already purified. So why are they taking delight? So that proves that this particular subject matter is transcendent. Okay? Uh, because although they have become siddhas, they are taking great delight in hearing this uh, pastimes of the Supreme Lord. So who are these muktas? It can refer to muktas who are uh, uh, even uh, devotees. Or it can refer to muktas such as Jnana Mishras, huh? like Kumaras, such personalities also, or like Nava Yogendras, all these people also. Huh? These are all uh, completely uh, liberated souls, but still they are seen to be glorifying uh, the Supreme Lord. Nairgunyastha Ramantesma, although they are Nairgunyastha, meaning they are transcendently situated, they have conquered the modes, they have gone beyond the modes, but still they are they take delight in Krishna's glories. So it proves that these glories are completely transcendental. Uh, he says that. So that is the purpose of this particular verse. Like that. So, Srila Prabhupada also, uh, he is addressing these ideas in his purport. So just read Prabhu, the generally liberated soul.
Und Generally liberated soul take pleasure in describing the transcendental activities as mentioned as mentioned above since narayana hari the personality of godhead is beyond the material creation his form and attributes are not material the topmost uh, transcendentalist or liberated soul realize him in advance by advance experience by experience of transcendental knowledge and therefore they take pleasure in the discussion of the transcendental qualities of lord's past times yes so these personalities are uh, completely transcendental and still they are taking great pleasure in describing lord's transcendental activities so it proves that uh, the activities are not mundane huh? prabhupad says that very clearly in next line read the topmost transcendentalist the top the topmost transcendentalist is not interested in anything material and he is taking interest in the matter of the lord's activities is definite definite proof that the lord is not like one of us in the material world mm. so that is the point huh? so these muktas they also take uh, pleasure so in sh- in another verse in 10th canto nivrutta tarshe rupagiya manad bhoshada shrotra manobhiramat kah uttama shlok guna anuvada uman virajet vina pashugna so shila jeev goswami explains there that nivrutta tarshe rupagiya manat is showing the category of muktas and who are these muktas he says that these muktas can be gnana mishra bhaktas or it can be also pure devotees huh? even in that they can be one who are jivan muktas or they those who are videha muktas meaning those who have gone back to the spiritual world or those who are here in this body but they have become completely free from contamination huh? so these jivan muktas or videha muktas whether they are from the path of gnan mishra bhakti or they are from the path of pure devotion they all of them are seen to be um, you know taking delight in lord's transcendental glories huh? we see that so personalities like kumaras personalities like navayogendras huh? or narad muni uh, all of them these personalities also they take great delight in lord's glories so that is the special uh, Uh, characteristics atma rama asya munayo nirgantha api urukrame kurvanti ahetu kim bhaktim itham bhuta guna hari even those who are atma ramas and they have they are muktas atma ramas or nivrutta tarshair or nairgunya stha it is meaning same thing all these verses actually are meaning the same thing that such people also take a great delight in krishna's glories so that is why it is the most recommended path for everybody huh? but then prayana was said in this verse uh, prayana generally meaning some are there who don't take delight in krishna's glories huh? prayana when you say then does it mean fully uh, praya doesn't mean nashta prayeshu abhudreshu meaning uh, nashta praya almost anarthas are destroyed they are not completely destroyed huh? why because yes some anarthas will be destroyed only at the prema level uh, they will not be destroyed at anarth nivrutti level uh, so only three kinds of anarthas are destroyed at anarth nivrutti the fourth one uh, which is apradhot it is destroyed only at the stage of prema so that's why nashta praya issue uh, like that although that verse is talking about uh, bhakti which is at the level of nishtha but then still it is said nashta prayesh so vishnath chakravarti says it is like pato bhagna gramo dagdha ha uh, aap bolte ho gaon jal gaya ya kapda phat gaya so it is not that entire village is burnt nothing is remaining and similarly kapda phat gaya it's not mean that ek ek tantu bahar aa gaya uska <laughs> one one fiber has come out no it is torn some word so similarly he says anartha nivrutti should not be taken to mean that all anarthas are gone huh? it's not like that so in explanation in madhurya kadambini he writes like that so uh, anartha nivrutti means praya uh, three kinds of anarthas are over but the fourth one apradhot they take lot of time and to go 
they don't go that easily. So uh, same way here also, I was talking about prayana aspect. Huh? Prayana means uh, there are certain other muktas or munis who actually they don't take pleasure in uh, Krishna's glory because they are attracted to the impersonal feature. Huh? So what happens to them, such people, they achieve the, they, they have in that sadhan kal, they take delight in Krishna's glory or they take delight as yogis, they take delight in uh, uh, meditating on Paramatma. But by that, they want to achieve moksha, you know. So once they achieve moksha, so in that Brahman, there is no Krishna Katha there, isn't it? So they, that's why they are the ones who are exceptions to this hmm? prayena. They are the ones who, uh, in their sadhan kal, yes, they took delight, but then they wanted uh, to merge in Brahman. So that's why Krishna awards them that particular benediction, like that. Uh, so Prabhupada is also writing this in his purport. Uh, read that last para. Real, real trans transcendental pleasure is realized in the glorification of the transcendental Lord and not in the feeling of being situated in his impersonal feature. But there are also other who are not the topmost transcendentalist, but are in a lower status and who do not take pleasure in describing the transcendental activities of the Lord. Rather, they discuss such activities of the Lord formally with the aim of merging into his existence. That's the point. They discuss Lord's pastimes and they discuss activities of the Lord, but that is for with the aim of merging into his existence. So once that they reach that particular level, then they are not interested in hearing about Lord. Huh? Like that. So they see their attitude towards Krishna is not of uh, considering him as Maya. Yesterday also I was explaining, but that that their attachment is for Brahman. Huh? So that's why they are able to achieve Brahman. Uh, they are not. Uh, they they just uh, say uh, or. Uh, move themselves aside from Krishna, although they are getting great delight in his uh, pastimes or meditation on his form. But once they achieve that complete purification of heart, then they, you know, they remove, move away from that. And they just want to merge in Brahman. So that is how. So these are unfortunate yogis or unfortunate jnanis. Both can be referred by this. Okay. Text 8. Idam Bhagavatam Nama Puranam Brahma Samitam Adhitavan Dvaparado Pitur Dvaipa Yanadaham. Yes. At the end of Dvapar Yuga, I studied this great supplement of Vedic literature named Srimad Bhagavatam, which is equal to all the Vedas from my father, Srila Dvaipa and Vyasadev. Hmm. So I am myself the example of this, he is telling. Huh? You are saying. Are there people who are, uh, you know, who, who are transformed by the example? You are talking about Prayan Muni or Rajan, huh? those who are muktas, they also take delight in Krishna's glories. Aisa koi hai kya? Huh? So I am the one, <laughs> he is saying, huh? right, with all humility, but yeah, I am the one. I was also like that, he is saying. Idam Bhagavatam Nama Puranam Brahma Samitam. Huh? This Puran named as Bhagavata, which is Brahma Sammitam, which is non different than uh, Supreme Lord, uh, or Prabhupada says, which is uh, essence of the Vedas, uh, which is equal to Vedas, Brahma Sammitam. Yes, Brahma can mean Veda, uh, Brahma can mean also Supreme Lord, which is non different than Supreme Lord, Brahma Sammitam. Adhitavan Dvaparado, I myself studied this particular Puran. Uh, in the beginning of Dwapar Yuga, from whom Pituhu Dvaipa Yanadaham, from my Pita, from Vyasadev Dvaipayan, uh, like that. So he's saying that even I studied, although I was a Mukta from beginning, isn't it? Shukdev Goswami was a liberated soul, right from the womb, being in the womb of her, uh, his mother. But still he is saying, I studied this Puran, I studied this uh, Bhagavat Puran. Hmm? So, by say, speaking about Bhagavat Puran, he is telling that such is the glory of Lord's pastimes. Huh? Because what did he hear in Bhagavat Puran? He heard those two verses, isn't it? Aho bakiyam stanakala kutam jigham sayapaya yadapya sadhvi lebhe gatim dhatri uchitam tatonyam 
kam va dayalum sharanam vrajema and barha pidam natavaravapu karnayo karnikaram bibhradvasa kanaka kapisham vaijayantim chamalam randran veno radhara sudhaya purayan gopa vrindai vrindaranyam svapadaramanam pravishad geeta kirti ah, he heard these two verses just it is explained uh, in Srila Baldev Vidya Bhushan's commentary on Tattva Sandarbha, uh, how the transformation of Srila Shukdev Goswami took place. Uh, so, you know, because Shukdev Goswami was born and then, he, he, you know that story, right? He was not ready to come out of his mother Vitika's womb. And then uh, Vyasadev said, uh, what do you want me to do? So he said, I don't uh, believe your words if you can get Supreme Lord to promise me that uh, I will never fall in Maya then I will come out of the womb. Because he was already staying in the womb for 12 years. Sometimes it is said 16 also. Brahma Vaivad Puran says this. 12 years he was staying in the womb. And so then Vyasadeva said, okay. And he went to Dwarka because Lord Krishna was there. Shukdeva Goswami appeared when Lord was there on this planet. So he went to Dwarka and brought Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna spoke to this child saying that, come out. The womb. Why you are troubling your mother like that? He said, no, no, I'll fall prey in Maya. So Krishna said, no, I personally promise you that you will never fall in Maya. And you will be a liberated soul right from the beginning. Huh? That way. So this is, of course, you understand it's a pastime. Huh? But that was the Lord's promise to him. And then uh, he, he said, okay, if Lord Krishna is promising because he is Maya Dish, so I can now come out like that. And that is where he got the name also at Shuka. Vyasat Vadiya Tanaya Shukavad Manodnyam Brute Astutat Namna Shuka Eva Vikhyata. That is when Lord Krishna said to Vyas, actually, that your Tanaya, your son, is speaking like a Shuka. He is speaking very beautifully. Yeah, so, let his name be Shuka, Shuka Dev, huh? because he's speaking so beautifully like a way, Madhur, like a parrot, uh, that way. Of course, we know he is a parrot uh, yeah, in Krishna Lila, special. So, but yeah, in the past time, yes, that's where he receives the name. So after he came out, immediately he started going towards the forest. He didn't wait also. Yam pravrajantam manupetam apeta krityam. That is when uh, Vyasadev started calling out Putra, but Putreti Tanmayataya Tarabo Bhinedus. Only the trees, you know, they responded. So just as he was grief stricken, even the trees were grief stricken. That such a beautiful child like Shukadev, who is such a, a great devotee, he is leaving. Tam Vyasa Sunam Upayame like that Guru Muni Nam. So uh, this was Shukdev. Huh? So he went and he was staying in forest only. So after some time, then when Lord Krishna disappeared, and then Vyasadev saw the anomalies of Kal Kali Yuga, then Narada came and instructed him. Then Vyasadev wrote down, expanded the Bhagavatam. Huh? And then he decided who's the best candidate for this, who, who's the student of Bhagavatam. So then he got immediately reminded, my son, uh, right from childhood, one who is one who is liberated soul, right from the womb. So then he devised a means trick to get him back. Uh, so then he sent some of his disciples who went and recited uh, near Shukdev these beautiful verses from Bhagavad. So then when Shukdev heard it, immediately his heart was attracted towards the glorification of Supreme Lord. And then he said, I want to know about this. Who, who taught you this? So he said, your father only taught. <laughs> so come home. And so that is when Shukdev Goswami came back to learn Srimad Bhagavad. So that is Dvaparadau. So although it says Dvaparadau, here it means in the end of Dvapar Yuga, because this pastime has not happened in the beginning, right? So literal meaning would be Adau beginning, but it means it is at the end. Dvaparado. So Shri Goswami gives that logic of uh, when Vriksha Shakha Divat Tadagre Vyavharena, meaning what? When you say the tip tip of the tree, what is tip of the tree? Uh, tadagra. Vriksha ka agra kya hai? Is it root 
or is it the topmost point? Uh, when you say the tip or uh, you know the beginning of the tree, somebody can take it to mean the root, or it can also agra. The Sanskrit is exact actually. Tadagra. Uh, vriksha ka agra kya hai? So agra is root or agra is the tip? <laughs> like that. So although agra is typically taken as root, but actually it means the tip, uh, the top part, uh, like that. When you say the tip of the tree, nobody goes to the root, isn't it? He goes to the top uh, that way. So this is how he says that. Although it is Dvaparadi, uh, is said Dvaparado, it means end of Dvapar Yuga. Uh. So this happened in the Sandhyamsha of Dvapar Yuga. Dwapar Yuga is 8,64,000 years, right? So every Sandhya is uh, consisting of 1 by 12th of every Yuga. Uh, so Sandhya in the beginning is 1 by 12th of the total duration. And Sandhyamsha, which is towards the end, is also 1 by 12th of the total duration. So in that 1 by 12th, uh, this is meaning the last part of uh, Dwapar Yuga, Sandhyamsha, how much that comes? Uh, probably 72,000 years. Last 72,000 years of Dwapar Yuga. That is called as Sandhyamsha. Uh, so in that, uh, this past time has happened because, you know, Vyasdev and all, they came in the, uh, they came at the end of uh, Dwapar Yuga. Like that. So that is Dvaparado, Pitur Dvaipayanadaham. So such was the effect of this Puran, this attraction, uh, meaning attractive qualities of Krishna, that even he studied it under his pita, although he was already a liberated soul, even he was attracted. That kind of power is there in Lord's glories, Atma Ramash Chamunayo, or even you know other Sankshobham Akshara Jusham Apichitatanvo, and that is also spoken for Kumaras that how it attracted, although they were transcendentalist, liberated souls, it immediately attracted their heart, that uh, breeze which entered, touching Lord's lotus feet and the Tulasi on Lord's lotus feet, and this way. So then he, he is the one who studied this particular uh, scripture from his father that way. So point is, uh, even he got attracted. So Prabhupada is addressing uh, these ideas. Read the purport. The statement made by Srila Sukadeva Goswami in the last verse that mainly the topmost transcendentalists who are beyond the jurisdiction of regulations and restrictions take to the task of hearing about and glorifying the personality of Godhead is verified by his personal example. So this is his own personal example. That principle that he spoke in the prior verse, example he is speaking by his own life and that how he got attracted to this, right? Like that. So by Adhitavan, that I also studied this from my father. Huh? Prabhupada writes a very nice commentary by connecting to that Adhitavan, that I also studied, although I was a Mukta, huh? I was a Jnani, huh? complete Atma Jnana, but still I studied. So write that, uh, read that Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam, or for that matter, any other scientific literature, cannot be studied at home by one's own intellectual capacity. Medical books of anatomy or physiology are available in the market, but no one can become a qualified medical practitioner simply by reading, reading such books at home. One has to be admitted to the medical college and study the books under the guidance of learned professors. Similarly, Shumat Bhagavatam, the postgraduate study of the science of Godhead, can only be learned by studying it at the feet of a realized soul like Srila Vyasadeva. Although Sukhdev Goswami was a liberated soul from the very day of his birth, he still had to take lessons of Srimad Bhagavatam from his great father Vyasadeva, who compiled the Srimad Bhagavatam under the instruction of another great soul, Sri Narad Muni. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed a learned Brahmana to study Srimad Bhagavatam from a pers personal Bhagavat. Yeah, so that is the point, huh? that he also studied it under Vyasadeva. So Prabhupada says that it is not just a matter of intellectual capacity. Bhagavatam has to be studied under a Bhagavat. Huh? Ideally, from a liberated soul, he is saying, from a realized soul like Srila Vyasadeva. Huh? But in the absence of realized soul, we can study it from at least person Bhagavat who is trying to practice it in his life. Huh? That way. So finally, Prabhupada, that's why I also said, uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed a learned Brahmana to study Srimad Bhagavatam from a personal Bhagavat. It is just not a matter of reading our, on our own, isn't it? Uh, 
uh, if we try to read on our own it is like trying to get that fruit which is on the tallest branch on the sweetest fruit on the tallest branch of a tree trying to pick on your own it will just fall apart and it will break it meaning that meaning and the realizations of bhagavatam we will not be able to get it it is understood in parampara it is understood by hearing from devotees huh? like that so that is how it is that directly falling it down and breaking is compared to one's own efforts to study shrimad bhagavatam but when we study through the commentary of prabhupad commentary of previous acharyas then we will be able to understand oh this is what it means basically uh, this is the point like that so it is important that shrimad bhagavatam uh, we we hear it from the authentic commentaries uh, and the ideas sometimes uh, there might be a conditioning to you know read bhagavatam and just sort of speculate on it you know trying to understand what, by one's own intelligence what the verse is saying or like that so actually that also needs a kind of adhikar huh? not anybody can do it uh, that kind of philosophical speculation those who have studied bhagavatam for years they have heard all the ideas of uh, prabhupada and acharyas on that particular subject matter they have read bhagavatam end to end then the person may get adhikar to be able to uh, you know come up with some philosophical uh, analysis or speculation on a certain point uh, but first thing Shri Jeev Goswami says in Bhakti Sandarbh is, you should hear on a scripture that is available in your sampradaya. What all is written on that? Uh, one should read and hear that. What all is written? Because it will first make your uh, the jnana aspect of that particular verse very clear. You you get the exact premise. What concept that verse is speaking? Uh, is it speaking about uh, mukta as a pure devotee or mukta as a jnani or mukta or a yogi? Uh, you have to know that first then you will be able to draw out some personal applications if the verse is speaking about yogi and we start drawing obligation for bhakta well, the speculation ho gaya na no? you understand so that is why the concept of a verse should be understood first very very nicely and that is done when you scrutinizingly read when you understand the context of the verse the concept of the verse the schema of the verse and when that is clear then one will be able to give a good uh, application of that good conclusion of that some generic things can surely be drawn uh, you know that is fine but if especially one wants to get into nitty gritties and uh, analyze it to a deeper extent the the fundamental subject matter should be very clear that what it is saying actually what does the word stand for and uh, that should be very clear that way fine so prabhupad further speaks about brahma samhitam uh, how this scripture is a sound representative of lord krishna it is granthavatar it is non different than lord krishna meaning it can have uh, bestow the same benefit like lord shri krishna uh, it is it is non different than shri krishna that way bhagavata literally means bhagavatah idam jo bhagwan ka hai wo bhagavat या जो भगवान के बारे में है दट इज ऑल्सो भागवतम जो भगवान के स्वामित्व में है वो भागवतम भगवत स्वामी भगवत स्वामी का मिदम मीनिंग एक्चुअली लॉर्ड ओन इट दिस स्क्रिप्चर इज ओन बाय द लॉर्ड एवरी स्क्रिप्चर इज ओन बाय हिम बट दिस इज एक्सक्लूसिवली ओन बाय हिम सो इफ समबडी डजेंट हैव भक्ति नो ही कैनॉट प्रोग्रेस इन दिस स्क्रिप्चर ही मे बी एबल टू गेट बाय हिज इंटेलेक्चुअल uh capacity some understanding of upanishads or vedanta but this bhagavatam is the scripture which belongs to Bha- bhagavan uh bhagavat swami ka midam shila vishwan chakravarti does this definition uh, and he says that uh, that is why bhagavatam needs a submission under the personal bhagavatam to be um, uh, to understand it it's not a matter of intellectual capability it's not matter of like studying some upanishads or vedanta or like that even that needs proper shelter of guru agreed but all the more for bhagavatam because it is bhag- about bhagwan and it is owned by bhagwan it is his own scripture uh, this way so in that sense finally prabhupada also speaks about that idea of dwapar adav uh, means actually at the end of dwapar uh, he is quoting even shilajeev goswami 
calling the upper portion of tree the beginning. Fine. Text 9. Parinishthita opinair gunya uttama shloka lilaya grihita cheta rajarshe akhyanam yadadhitavan. Yes. O oh, saintly king, I was certainly situated perfectly in transcendence, yet I was still attracted by the del delineation of the pastimes of the Lord, who is described by enlightened verses. Mm. Uh, so if uh, Parikshit were to say that, oh, actually you were uh, liberated from right from the beginning. You didn't even wait for uh, taking Upavit. Huh? Isn't it taking any upavet or apeta krityam, any further samskaras, anupetam, apeta krityam, huh? like that? He, he didn't undergo any upavet samskar because he was apeta kritya, because no samskar was expected only for him. Are sanskar kisko lagte hai? One who is conditioned soul, Baddha Jeev needs all those samskaras so that he can get purified. But he was not Baddha, he was Mukta. That's why apeta krityam. Uh, there was no expectation only of, of anything to be done for him. So he just left, that's why. You know, he didn't wait, uh, although Vyasde was calling for him like that. So if it was like that, it's that meaning you were liberated right from beginning. So you didn't even wait for the Vyasde uh, like that. So how is that? Uh, this is amazing that even you got attracted by these characteristics of uh, Supreme Lord uh, in Bhagavatam. So he is expressing that surprise. So yes, Shukdev is saying, Parinishthitopi Nairgunne Uttama Shloka Leelaya. Uh, although I was completely situated in transcendence, but Uttama Shloka Leelaya Grahita Cheta. Uh, Uttama Shloka Ki Leelaon Se Grahita Cheta. My heart was attracted by the characteristics, by the pastimes of this Lord Uttama Shloka. And this is why Akhyanam Yad Adhitavan. This is why I heard this Akhyan, this Puran called Srimad Bhagavatam from my father. Hmm? So, yes, I was completely dedicated and fully realized in transcendence, being an Atma Ram. But such is the power of this Uttam Shloka's Leela, that Grihita Cheta, my heart was drawn, my heart was attracted to these wonderful pastimes. And then I came back and heard this uh, amazing, uh, amazing Puran uh, Akhyan. Shri Bhagavat Akhyan, like that. Uh, this is how, that way. So, Shila Shukadev Goswami was actually uh, like that. He was a great soul. And, you know, when he saw Vyasadeva's uh, great uh, bereavement, great separation from him, uh, Ninth Canto explains that he created one Chaya Shukha from his body. He created a duplicate Shukha. You know, and he said to the Vyasadeva that you keep him if you are so much doing putra putra like that, but you leave me alone that way. And then Chaya Shuka went back and stayed with Vyasadeva, married, produced children. His, his daughters are described in ninth canto, uh, Shuka Kanya, uh, like that. So that is where Acharya has explained that this was a different Shuka. Uh, so he was the one who went to Janaka and then. He was tested there by putting sugar on his tongue and all that. So that is not our Shukadev. Uh, that is another Shukadev, uh, which is Chaya Shukra, but sometimes also known as Arani Sutta Shukadev. Uh, he was born from another Arani like that. So this uh, Bhagavat Pravakta Shukadev was a Naishthika and he was Parinishthit Nairgunne. Uh, he was completely transcendental from right from beginning, but still he was attracted by Lord's pastime, such is the glory of these pastimes. So he came and he heard the whole Akhyan from Srila Vyasadeva, uh, it is said that way. So that is why uh, I want to speak this uh, same Akhyan to you uh, with that purpose, he's speaking these things. See, I am personally the example that how the happiness of Bhakti is greater than happiness of Brahmananda, like that. So that way. So there are many great personalities like that who are transformed by Lord's pastimes. Huh? Even Bilva Mangal Thakur was like that. Bilva Mangal Thakur was at one point of time greatly uh, worshipped by Advaitis. Huh? 
uh, advaitins so but then uh, later you know he writes that advaita vithi patikaya rupasya swananda simhasana labdha diksha shathena kena api vayam hatena dasi krita gopa vadu vitena uh, that is his famous words where he says that although i was worshipped by the followers of advaita uh, advaita vithi patikaya upasya like that and you know i was greatly learned transcendentalist but i was forcibly converted into dasi by this boy you know by who is the boy shri krishna uh, one gopavadhu you know vitena one who is the master of all the gopavadhus he hatena he caught me forcibly and made into his own dasi like that writes uh, bilva mangal thakur so there are many great personalities who got transformed like that uh, even similar stories there for madhusudan saraswati you know, who also got transformed and he wrote that first i was running behind white leaving the black but now i am running behind the black leaving the white <laughs> what is that black and white <laughs> yeah white is brahma and black is krishna so very nice way he writes like that so krishna and do mukhat krishna paratatvam kim api aham na jane so he is the one who wrote that also so that is the point prabhupad says in purport that with a poor fund of knowledge we cannot adjust to the idea of personality of absolute truth and thus the personal activities of lord are deplored by less intelligent and personalist but reason and argument together with transcendental process of approaching the absolute truth help even the staunch impersonalist to become attracted by personal activities of the lord see prabhupada is saying reason and argument together with transcendental process of approaching the absolute truth huh? only reason and argument will not help but there also has to be the transcendental process of shravanam kirtanam vishnu like that huh? and in that process we should not also uh, uh, belittle the ex- the aspect of uh, argument and reason huh? we shouldn't think that oh this is useless this studying scriptures and Uh, knowing the arguments and all that no so intelligent people need reason and argument also to convince them right so we can try to know shastras in depth as much as we can yatha dhitam yatha mati everybody has limited capacity whatever capacity he has with that he can try to understand but prabhupada is saying reason and argument along with transcendental process of approaching the absolute so that would uh, refer to the shravanam kirtanam reason and argument would refer to the scriptural knowledge on that aspect so together it can even ka- transform a person like shukadev go uh, person like shukadev go swami yes on uh, this way so this is the transcendental activities of lord that they attracted even shukadev so text 10 and we'll pause with this tadaham te bidhasyami mahapaurushiko bhavan yasya shraddha dhatamashu syan mukunde pati sati that very shrimad bhagavatam i shall recite before you because you are the most sincere devotee of lord krishna one who gives full attention and respect to hearing shrimad bhagavatam achieves unflinching faith in the supreme lord the giver of salvation yeah so yad adhitavan tad abhidhasyami huh? yad adhitavan that which i learned tad abhidhasyami that i will teach you or i will recite you meaning whatever i heard that is what i will speak huh? based on this shri vishwan chakravarti makes a comment that entire bhagavatam right from its content janmadi asya yatah to the last verse of bhagavatam was spoken by shri shukdev goswami too huh? he also spoke these contents to parikshit huh? like that so that is the point because he is saying yad adhitavan tad abhidhasyami that which i heard meaning vyasdev taught him the full bhagavatam right 18000 verse wala bhagavatam so naturally shukdev also taught all those contents to uh, shila shri parikshit maharaj huh? so tadham te bhidhasyami mahapaurushiko bhavan you are mahapaurushika he says huh? 
you are actually a devotee of Mahapurusha. Prabhupada writes, most sincere devotee of Lord Krishna. Mahapaurushika. Huh? Or Vishnath Chakravarti says, Mahapaurushika means Mahapurusham uh, uh, Praptum Samartha. One who deserves to uh, attain the lotus feet of Mahapurusha. Huh? Because you deserve, you are a Mahabhagavad, you surely, you surely, you know, certainly you deserve to attain his lotus feet. So I will speak that same Bhagavat to you. Huh? Mahabhavarushika. So he's glorifying Parikshit. He knows Parikshit's uh, position uh, that he is not an offender of Shamika Rishi or like that. So he is actually most exalted Mahabhagavat. Uh, whatever that situation was arranged, but uh, Shukdev has a great regard for his student uh, that is seen here, Mahabhavarushika. Yasya Shradya Dhatam Ashu Syan Mukunde Mati Sati. That Bhagavatam in which if you have the Shraddha, if you hear it with Shraddha, then soon Mukunde Sati Mati Syat Mukundame Ekdam Sati Mati Ban Jayegi. Meaning your uh, Mati, your consciousness will become uh, fixed in Krishna. Uh, how does Prabhupada translate Mati? Uh, sati as unflinching. Yes, unflinching. Uh, unflinching uh, consciousness will be established in Lord in Supreme Lord Krishna. So I will speak that same Bhagavatam to you. Uh, thereby you will be able to surely, certainly fix your consciousness on Krishna and thus attain his feet because you deserve to attain his feet. You are Mahabhagavat. You are devotee of Maha, uh, you are devotee of Supreme Lord like that. So this way, Prabhupada in purport, uh, uh, he continues that theme of uh, Bhagavatam not learning by one's own intellectual capacity but learning it by submitting oneself to the devotee. Uh, so he speaks about avaroha pantha. The process of bhakti is not aroha pantha. It is avaroha. We receive transcendental knowledge through the disciplic succession. Uh, so Prabhupada says, for advancement of material knowledge, there is a need for personal ability and researching aptitude. But in case of spiritual knowledge, all progress depends more or less on the mercy of spiritual master. Uh, the spiritual master must be satisfied with the disciple. Only then is knowledge automatically manifested before the student of spiritual science. So in uh, material sciences, yes, that researching aptitude and ability, intellectual capacity is very much needed. But in spiritual life, actually, it depends upon mercy of spiritual master. Uh, this whole uh, aspect of spiritual science and realization, it depends on how one pleases the spiritual master. If you have the ability, use it. That is fine. But ability in itself will not guarantee the success. Huh? It, is, it is just one of the tools that you can use to study and understand. But finally, what will be uh, the pivotal factor is, is the spiritual master satisfied? And then for such a person, yasya deve para bhakti, yatha deve tatha guru, tasyete kathita hi artha. For such a person, the arthas, the meanings of the text will be kathita. They will be spoken to him. They will be revealed to him. They will be delivered to him. Prakashante Mahatmana. Like that. So that is the point. So that is why it's important that in spiritual life, nobody is unqualified. It is all a matter of how one follows instructions of spiritual master and achieves uh, you know, his grace by which one will be able to understand. Uh, having said that, Prabhupada also says, the process should not, however, be understood to be something like magical feats, whereby the spiritual master acts like a magician and injects spiritual knowledge into his disciple. Uh, although on one hand, yes, it is completely based on spiritual master's mercy, but don't consider it is like somebody touched, uh, he got current and then he became enlightened uh, like that. Right? There was one big Bengali <laughs> so, uh, guru who was like that. And he gave great uh, promise to his disciple and then started crying, I lost my power. I lost my knowledge. That way. So Prabhupada is saying, no, it's not like that. No? Uh, the process is, bona fide spiritual master reasonably explains everything on, to the disciple on authority of Vedic wisdom. So the bona fide spiritual master speaks also on the basis of bona fide scriptures. It is not some magical feat. Huh? 
it is not some uh, you know moving some magical wand and jadoo ki chhadi ghuma di ho gaya you know like that it's not like that he speaks from bona fide scriptures uh, brahmishta right you know uh, shrotriya and brahmishta those are the characteristics of guru uh, like that and samit pani is the characteristic of the disciple like that so the disciple uh, can receive such teachings prabhupada said not exactly intellectually but by submissive inquiries and a service attitude uh, like that tasmat gurum eva bhigachet samit pani hi shrotriyam brahmanishtam it is said so submissive inquiries and service attitude from disciple side and authentic presentation of vedic wisdom from the spiritual master side this is a perfect recipe uh, for the enlightenment like that otherwise uh, you know like that uh, what is that dhurta guru lobhi chella dono ka narak mein thallam dhela it will it should not be like that uh, is it it should be this proper combination so that is why robert says idea is both spiritual master and disciple must be bona fide uh, this way so we see that many of the disciples sometimes they may not have very intellectual great ability but by spiritual master's mercy then they become exalted uh, exalted exalted people that way because it's all on the grace of spiritual master but that is not to minimize the process of shravanam shravanam kirtanam uh, study of shastras see sometimes we hear such statements then we may just totally minimize belittle the value of study of shastras or uh study of importance of shravanam importance of uh, kirtanam uh, especially the aspect of shravanam study of shastra shri jeev goswami says in bhakti sandarbha that although that uh, the whole bhakti process depends on the mercy of the spiritual master but that mercy is received through following his instructions of studying shastras following his instructions of doing shravanam kirtanam and seva and further aspects unlike that okay to we don't belittle the value of shravanam or pathanam and all that in this the point is it is not like a gyani's procedure where a gyani on his own he is trying to understand uh, vimarshanam he is he understands scriptures and then he is trying to do vimarshana of that neti neti that way so that is not our process our process is to hear from a guru shastriya shraddha wo hai hamari process uh, shastrarth vishwas so that's why one has to hear very carefully and uh, understand things and put it into practice and then one will be able to progress in bhakti so that is the point thik whenever prabhupad speaks this theme uh, you can rest assured also that he brings the theme of one should not be hearing from professional reciter so here also when he speaks about you know proper guru proper disciple you see here there he will speak professional reciter <laughs> he will not leave professional reciters we have saik kathakar sab bhagavatam so they, that we should not hear from them because they are making a business out of shrimad bhagavatam that is highly condemned actually one should not make a business out of bhagavatam like that one should glorify the lord and for that if somebody is getting some dakshina that is fine like that so there is finally prabhupad also addresses this idea that whole shrimad bhagavatam was explained from very beginning janmadasya to the last verse that way prabhupad quotes nice two verses for mahapurusha huh? this was unique i saw in prabhupad's commentary that uh, shila shukdev uh, is calling parikshit as mahapurushika no so who is that mahapurusha who is mahapurush supreme lord is mahapurush so prabhupad quotes two verses which call chaitanya mahaprabhu as mahapurush like that so he has put those nice verses from 11th canto uh, you know this tyaktva sudustu jasurepsit and this was dheyam sada paribhava uh, so vande mahapurush de charana ravindam uh, one who is uh, uh, mahapurush is shri chaitanya mahaprabhu or supreme lord shri krishna uh, this verse is you know is translated in three different ways it can mean krishna it can mean rama it can mean chaitanya mahaprabhu uh, like that so all that so this is mahapaurushika supreme lord's devotee fine like that so this is what prabhupada has spoken finally also in the last para again he speaks about complete text of shrimad bhagavatam 
this way. Okay. Are there any questions? I was planning to wait, to stop by 3.10 or so, but uh, it went a little bit too much ahead. So, yes. This Madhusudan uh, Saraswati, can you tell something about him? Because I heard he became impersonalist. He wrote Advaita Siddhi, but later, I, I don't know how he became a personalist. Can you? Uh, it is more from Aitihya Praman. Uh, it is not uh, uh, so much spoken by our Acharyas. Of course, our Acharyas, some of them come before him and some come after him. But there is Aitihya in, uh, in Aitihya, meaning historical references in Vrindavan and all that. Uh, that is spoken so sometime later in some other context i can tell uh, like that so basically he was transformed uh, by a supreme lord's mercy in vrindavan by getting darshan uh, like that although he was a very formidable advait scholar uh, but he he received some mercy and it could it is possible because possible in the sense uh, that mercy because Initially, he had come to Navadvip to learn from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu only. He came to Navadvip to learn from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but then he didn't find him there because Mahaprabhu had left for Puri to take sannyas. Meaning, after taking sannyas, he had left for Puri and he was staying in Puri. So then, because he didn't find Mahaprabhu to learn under, so he decided to go to Varanasi. <laughs> and then in Varanasi, he became the great, uh, greatest Advaita scholar that way. But then uh, he always had a great appreciation for Mahaprabhu and also for the uh, path of bhakti. Uh, so later uh, it is seen that he is transformed and he is brought back. So there is some articles are there from IT here. You can take that. Okay. Any question on the, what we discussed? Yes, Prabhu. Prabhu, this uh, seventh verse, Nairagunya Stha. So, Nairagunya is uh, transcendentally situated. So, which mood, uh, mode? Generally, goodness or this is, is beyond the three modes or? Ah, Prabhuji, that Nairagunya Stha is uh, transcendental only, beyond the three modes, like that. Huh? So, beyond the three modes. That but means in pure goodness means? It means pure goodness. Yeah. So, uh, Nairgunyastha will be Nirgun, uh, which is devoid of all the three gunas. So that is how it is, Nairgunyastha, like that. But, uh, uh, you know, if you see the path of Jnana, uh, that path of Jnana is considered Sattvic, Sattvicam uh, Jnanam, yes. isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, like that. So when this means Nairgunyastha, it is basically speaking about the aspect of uh, jnanis as well as aspect of devotees. Uh, so, Vishwan Chattravarti or 11th Canto speaks that actually bhakti is only really nirguna, uh, if you say. But because uh, in the path of jnana also, the sattva is uh, no longer influenced by rajas and tamas. Uh, so, that's why they, although it is sattvic process actually, jnanam to sattvikam, uh, the like that, but they are not influenced by rajas and tamas. So, that is why they are considered as transcendentally situated. But when you speak about Shuddha Sattva, there is this positive aspect of Swarup Shakti. Mm. Uh, in their case, only Vidya and Avidya aspect is there. So Avidya is destroyed and they are there on Vidya platform. But further than that is Shuddha Sattva, which is the positive Swarup Shakti, Nam Rup, Guna, Leela and all that. So that is real Nirguna as per 11th Canto. But this is more in the sense of uh, accepting them as liberated souls because they don't they don't uh, fall back uh, they don't uh, sort of get into contamination again that is why you know this okay. so they can be jivan muktas also these personalities or they can be those who have transcended also that way and this sandhyam show 72000 you said yeah. uh, that is like uh, means how much approximately 1 1 by 12th i said 1 by 12th of 864000 yeah that, that is, is so last 72,000 years. Yeah. So in that when specific something? So in that, uh, see, meaning the exactly it is just last part. Huh? If mm. we calculate backwards, then Lord Sri Krishna left. That is the considered the beginning of Kali Yuga. Mm. Huh? 
So by that calculation, then we can say how much some 3,000, 5,000 years before uh, today, you know, Lord Sri Krishna was there. So some calculation can be done in that particular fashion. It will come to come to something like 5,000, 5,100 years or like that. Uh, from now. Uh, from now, back. before. Uh, so there is a book uh, in which uh, uh, one Pandit Ji, uh, one Pandit Kotachal has done that calculation if you are looking very specifically. So there is a book called History of Mahabharat War. So he gives exactly when Lord Krishna left, how many years back, meaning from that particular book's time, how many years back it happened and other aspects also. When was Janmeja there? When was Parikshit there? Is writing that there. So it is 5,000, just slightly over 5,000 years that way. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, I got some confusion in this two sloka, understanding fifth and seventh. So the words are Sarvatma and Prayana. So while explaining Sarvatma, you said that it is something like Bhakti Misra Jnana. Correct? And then uh, while explaining Prayana, you said that this kind of people are removed in this uh, sloka, uh, seventh, explaining that they cannot uh, release uh, glorifying uh, Lord Krishna. Yeah, so when, yes, got it. Okay. So when you say Bhakti, no, Prabhu, uh, Sarvatma is referring to mo, uh, the aspect of Moksha Bhiri Sandini Bhakti, those who desire liberation. Huh? So then that Bhakti, if you see, will be called as Guni Bhuta Bhakti. Huh? It will not become Pradhani Bhuta Bhakti. Uh, you can read this concept. This is there in uh, seventh chapter of. 16th verse from Srila Vishwanath's commentary. So, everything is known as bhakti only. Huh? Because without bhakti, nobody can perfect their uh, paths. But guni bhuta, pradhani bhuta and kevala. Huh? When bhakti is pradhan, then we call it as jnana mishra bhakti or yoga mishra bhakti. So, when this is moksha bhi sandini bhakti, basically it means bhakti mishra jnana huh? or bhakti mishra yoga. So this is actually Gune Bhuta Bhakti category there. It will not get into Pradhani. Bhakti Pradhan nahi hai. That particular path is Pradhan. Huh? While the other two, they will be actually uh, the paths of uh, proper Bhakti. Huh? They are Kevala Bhakti's paths, the other two, like that. So at least it should be on the Pradhani Bhuta to call it as proper Bhakti. Huh? So Jnana Mishra Bhakti is a proper Bhakti because it can lead to Shantaras. Similarly, Yoga Mishra is also proper Bhakti. Uh, and then further than that is Kevala Bhakti, where there is ab absolutely no uh, Jnana aspect, even in even though he accepts Supreme Lord as devotee and Vaikuntha as Supreme, but he doesn't have even Jnana element, even in his Sadhana, that is also gone. Uh, it's like Kumaras are there, but the Kumaras in their sadhan, they have jnana aspect very strong. And you see their uh, glorification of Supreme Lord will always be with the jnana aspect. And they will glorify Krishna from uh, aspects of his relationship with the material world and analysis of, uh, you know, the position of material world and his uh, Krishna's relationship and further. And they, they like that kind of glorification or roles of Krishna, meaning Supreme Lord, uh, which deal with the jnana aspect more. And so that is only in their process. There is no goal of jnana that they desire, which is sayujya. Uh, so that is why jnana mishra bhakti qualifies one to go to shantarati. And they are able to achieve shantaras. They are able to go to vaikuntha, such people. Although it is considered jnana mishra, uh, but it is not a contamination. It is not jnana like advaitvadis. Uh, similarly, Yoga Mishra, those who have some yoga elements in their bhakti, uh, Nava Yogendras would be such an example. But they are devotees only. It's a bhakti proper. It's considered proper bhakti only. Uh, so Yoga Mishra bhakti, that will be that way. But when you now, uh, you know, twist it, you, uh, what you call it, flip it, then what will happen? The primarily person is aspiring for Sayujya. That will become Bhakti Mishra Dnyan. Or primarily person is aspiring for uh, in Bhakti Mishra Yoga also Sayujya only is the goal. 
Bhakti Mishra Yoga or Bhakti Mishra Dnyan, both have the same goal as Sayuja, like that. So in that case also, it can be called as Bhakti, but it is Guni Bhuta Bhakti. Huh? It's not Pradhani Bhuta. Bhakti Pradhan nahi hai. That particular path's Guna is prominent there. Meaning if it is Yoga or Dnyana, that is prominent. That is what is the difference. You understand? So that is why Sarvatma or like that, Sarvatma there will be referring to Aisi bhakti jisme moksha ki prapti ki ichha hai. Huh? Moksha meaning sayujya moksha. So what bhakti is that? Is there any bhakti where you desire for moksha, sayujya? Hmm? So that is only guni bhuta bhakti. That you should know that concept. That is known as guni bhuta bhakti. Uh, where you aspire for this particular aspect. Other two will not be like that. Huh? So that is the point. Okay. Like my question was there, the fifth sloka is saying that Gode Bhuta Bhakti, uh, they should also uh, do Sramat Girtan. Yeah. And seventh is saying they cannot do. No, 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 no. Okay. So I got it. Yeah. See, point is what these people also do Prabhu, but they don't see, they do it for Sayujya. Huh? Gune Bhuta ka example lelo. He is Bhakti Mishradnyani. So he will also hear Lord Hari's glories. He will also meditate on them. He will also worship Lord Hari and all everything like that. But purpose of all this is to achieve Sayujya. So as soon as he comes to that level of Sayujya, he gives it up. So that is Prayana Munayo. Uh, so wo Prayana se ye exclude ho gaye sab. Uh, because they don't accept it as goal, uh, as Sadhya, even after liberation. Till the point of liberation, they accept it as sadhan. Once that moment, uh, position is achieved, then they are not interested. For that. that is the point. Got it? Okay. Anybody from online has a question? In chat box? Okay, what is that? Happening, it's not working. Okay, you read, Prabhu. Samit Pani. Okay. Samit Pani means Pani means hand, and Samit means you know the firewood. Huh? So when you go to Guru, you don't go empty handed, uh, you go by taking some firewood for performing sacrifices. So it is showing the aspect of service, a uh, submissive service. And that is Samit. Samit means Samidha. Uh, so whenever uh, traditionally they would approach Guru, they wouldn't go empty handed, just like that. They would carry that uh, sacrifice, sacrificial wood, uh, that Indhan for uh, you know, performing the sacrificial aspect, Samit, Samidha. So that is Samit Pani. So it is indicative of the submissive service attitude for Guru. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. He is a pure devotee as a parrot. Um, Prabhupada writes in uh, explanation of this verse, Yam Pravrajantam, you can see that Shukdev Goswami is a pure devotee from birth. Prabhupada writes there in the purport. Huh? So what does it mean? Actually, he is a pure devotee from birth. Uh, who, do, who do you think, uh, you know, Lord Krishna is coming to promise him that you will not fall in Maya. And he is believing that those words with full conviction, thinking that Lord Krishna is Maya Dish. You know? So he has to be uh, a pure devotee, right? Such a person. So even in his pastimes, it is seen. So yes, it, he is a pure Vaishnava. It is just uh, to demonstrate the principle of Atma Ramascha Munayo, uh, that even such people get transformed. Jeeva Swami writes in, uh, in, uh, in Tattva Sandarbha, that he says that this is demonstration of the principle of uh, Atma Ramascha Munayo, the transformation of Shukdev Goswami or transformation of Kumaras. These are the examples of this principle. So yes, he is. That's all. Pradhani Bhuta and Gone Bhuta, yes, desire is the main criteria. And based on that desire, there uh, uh, this also changes. Uh, uh, sadhan also changes considerably. Meaning, both cases, the aspect of Shravanam Kirtanam is there. Uh, 
no doubt it is there but uh, in case of pradhani bhuta it will be extremely prominent and uh, they will uh, make it as the most prominent in case of guni bhuti it is guni bhuta it is one of the uh, elements like that although they have to focus on it very clearly otherwise they cannot but they have other sadhanas also they will do vedant vimarshan they will do uh, uh, you know many many other aspects neti neti and that kind of contemplation and all that uh, but this is also there shravanam kirtanam has to be there but in case of pradhani bhuta that will become the most prominent huh? that is the major thing and uh, some tinge of uh, that particular practice is there in there uh, the method uh, they they like that aspect of jnana similarly somebody may like the aspect of yoga huh? so he is a kevala bhakta but uh, if he he also practices yama niyam asan pranayam for the sake of you know help in bhakti for the sake of assistance in bhakti even when they want to give up the body they may utilize these limbs uh, we see even in case of prithu or in case of uh, personalities like dhruva because they are accomplished so they may utilize these limbs also like that uh. of course in that case uh, that will not be considered meaning dhruva is not considered yoga mishra or like that but i am saying other yoga mishra bhaktas they are like that they are accomplished in those limbs so they utilize those sadhanas for bhakti but main thing is bhakti only they they have clear concept of bhakti they want to achieve lords abroad they want to worship him they don't have any desire for sayujya shravanam kirtanam is their major sadhan along with this other subsidiary sadhana ours is kevala bhakti path we just don't take any other sadhan at all and there is no jnana element in the sense vedanta jnana uh, jnana like the the vedanta jnana uh, which is different way it is not a bhakti jnana that we are talking about uh, same way we don't have yoga elements in uh, bhakti right it is pure bhakti shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam and all we don't practice pranayam and dharana dhyan samadhi and such aspects you know you may do for chanting you may sit in asan that is okay <laughs> that is not that is not somebody will feel a hey, asan hey, yoga mishra <laughs> yoga mishra <laughs> like that or somebody is reading upanishad something from upanishad <laughs> is upanishad hey, dhyan mishra bhakti is reading upanishads uh, no no that, those are very specific process in which you uh, you have very definite practice of that particular limbs ठीक ओके यू वांट टू कमेंट समथिंग रोज ओके सो टेक्स्ट 11 वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वर्स एतन निर्विद्यमानानां इच्छताम अकुतो भयम योगिनां नृपणिरणितम हरेर नामानु कीर्तनम यस O oh King, constant chanting of the holy name of the Lord after the ways of the great authorities is the doubtless and fearless way of success for all, mm. including those who are free from all material desires, those who are desirous of all material enjoyment, and also those who are self-satisfied by dint of transcendental knowledge. Okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, so now. Uh, shukdev goswami continues to speak uh, so this is also like a conclusion of his uh, initial talk of uh, bhakti process uh, after this he will just speak about khatwang maharaj in a uh, in a sort of reassuring to parikshit maharaj but he is sort of concluding his instructions on uh, tasmat bharat sarvatma and what is to be heard what is to be remembered Uh, so he is concluding it over here he will bring up the topic again in second canto's last part uh, in between uh, he com- for comparison sake he speaks about ashtang yoga uh, like that so etan nirvidyamananam ichchatam akuto bhayam yoginam nirpan nirnitam harer namano kirtana so shila vishwan chakravarti says that uh, okay you are speaking about how this bhakti process is the highest and it attracts all the uh, all the liberated souls also so he says that uh, so 
tell me more about this bhakti uh, in this bhakti you spoke about shrotavya kirtitavya smartavya and different angas of bhakti so which is the highest anga uh, he is asking if he were to ask the, in that manner so he is addressing bhakte bhaktyangeshu uh, in the angas of bhakti uh, uh, kamapi ekam nirniyate uh, you please speak about uh, what is that highest anga in this bhakti uh, so in that uh, he is speaking this particular verse with that mindset uh, amongst uh, hearing shrotavya kirtitavya smartavya all these amongst these chanting of the holy names is the chief anga of bhakti uh, harer namanu kirtanam so harer namanu kirtanam anu kirtanam uh, constant chanting or anukirtanam means chanting in parampara chanting in the ways of you know great devotees guru shishya parampara so prabhupad is very nice prabhupad translates both the meanings in one statement <laughs> constant chanting of the holy name of the lord after the ways of great authorities <laughs> see anu anu from the constant and anu also means following in the authority sake they combine both of them both the meaning otherwise uh, shridhar swami gives a uh, no meaning as uh, uh, you know shridhar swami or vishwan chakravarti give as constant and other samacharyas give as following in the line anu so probat combine both like that anukirtanam uh, so this uh, chanting of the holy names harer namanu kirtanam uh, is the highest uh, means akuto bhayam uh, Harer Namano Kirtanam is going with Akuto Bhayam. Okay. Meaning the constant chanting of the holy names of the Lord is the fearless way. Uh, it is the way which is doubtless and fearless way of success. Etat Harer Namano Kirtanam Akuto Bhayam. This constant chanting of the holy names of the Lord is the doubtless and fearless means of all success. For whom? For three categories. Uh, निर्विद्यमानानाम इच्छताम एंड योगिनाम ओके निर्विद्यमानानाम इज वन कैटेगरी इच्छताम इज अनादर एंड योगिनाम इज थर्ड कैटेगरी सो इट्स डिसाइडेड इट्स एस्टेब्लिश्ड फैक्ट निर्णितम हे नृप ओ किंग दैट द कॉन्स्टेंट चैंटिंग इन परंपरा इज द बेस्ट मीन्स ऑफ सक्सेस फॉर निर्विद्यमानानाम मीनिंग दोज हु आर transcendental to all the desires ichhatam those who are full of desires or yoginam those who are self satisfied uh, like that so nirvidya mananam here refers to the devotees uh, who who don't have any desires your devotees uh, ichhatam refers to those who are desirers of moksha or desirers of uh, swarga adi uh, sense enjoyment or moksha or like that and yoginam refers to people who are self satisfied uh, these are uh, yogis are the people they would not be counted in devotees meaning nirvidya mananam and they are also not counted in uh, ichhatam naturally because they are more or less like satisfied you know they they uh, are not into active service of the supreme lord uh, they meditate on him and they are happy uh, with that uh, so nirvidya mananam is more for active service with that particular aspect like that uh, so that's why yogi naam nirvidya mana naam and ichhatam like that three uh, categories have been made so for all of them this particular path is the highest doubtless fearless way of attaining success what is the fear uh, shila vishwan chakravarti says the fear is of desha uh, kala shuddhi bhaya the fear is of time place circumstances Uh, is your sadhan depending on time place circumstances no harer namano kirtanam is not dependent on any time place circumstances uh, it is irrespective of time place circumstances desh kal patra even a mlecha can chant uh, he can chant in morning or he can chant in night and he can also chant in any place any situation shuchau ashuchau whatever uh, that is akuto bhayam uh, understand this this means is a completely fearless means huh? because in other paths there is this fear no there is a lot of consideration of shuddhi of desh kal patra 
deshkal upakaran uh, there is a lot of consideration of that shuddhi and uh, you cannot sit uh, for doing yoga uh, you know in the midst of city uh, uh, in the chowk <laughs> but you can chant and dance in chowk uh, in the square right deshkal shuddhi shuchau deshe pratishthape it will say you should go to shuchi place uh, like that and then upakaran also uh, deshkal patra patra means upakaran the person should also be very pure uh, if you have to perfect yoga process or jnana process antakaran shuddhi is the basic criterion uh, such a person should be freed from any desires for sense enjoyment then he can do vedant vimarshan vagar uh, uske pehle he should be free from attachment to fruits and desires same way with yoga Uh, that's why these paths compulsorily will ask one to take sanyas only yati can follow these processes at least perfection further uh, like that meaning beyond prana beyond pranayam uh, it is said to be that such a person should uh, pravrajet he should sanyasya gachet prakrist rupena gachet meaning he should take sanyas and leave uh, even shukdev goswami uses that word in text grahat uh, pravrajito dhira he says so that pravrajito means what it is sanyas actually uh, he has to take and so that kind of deshkal uh, upakaran shuddhi is expected but in holy name it's not expected one is any situation any ashram any kind of person any kind of birth he can chant still it will award all perfection Uh, that is the point so that's why harer namanu kirtanam is considered the fearless doubtless ways of perfection for everybody and so again here also please understand when it is ichhatam it would mean that in their particular paths also they have to have the aspect of shravanam kirtanam uh, they may not take exclusively to shravanam and kirtanam then that would become bhakti path no but what it means is they have to have that substantial aspect of shravanam kirtanam even though you want moksha or even though you want atmadnyan even though you want whatever else uh, ichhatam swarga bhi aa gaya whatever other things they are there so everybody for them it's the doubtless and fearless way of uh, achieving all um, their desired goals huh? so i am just giving the clear I meaning idea of the shloka Uh, what all these elements mean then you will find that these this is all explained by prabhupad huh? prabhupad explains these things so there these ideas are there from uh, shri vishwanath chakravarti so what prabhupad does is first two paras he speaks on vishwanath chakravarti's commentary and next he speaks on shri jeev goswami's commentary next uh, two three three paras huh? so this uh, section is a very famous section in bhakti sandarbha in which shilajeev goswami has commented um, on the aspect of kirtanam huh? there is one very nice section in uh, bhakti sandarbha which is good for all of us to read which is navavidha bhakti's every anga shilajeev goswami takes and very elaborately explains every anga shravanam kirtanam smaranam pada sevanam like that so he speaks detailed that what is the process what is the adhikar when is the adhikar for nama smaran when is the adhikar of leela smaran when is the adhikar of this a very good section actually so of course i am also studying it i am not an expert in it but uh, that is the place where he is explaining many many things in great details it's a, a big section in sandarbha like that so uh, there he is explaining this commentary also and so what you find in shila jeev goswami's commentary here is basically from there bhakti sandarbha uh, which is also there in krama sandarbha like that so the whole aspect of analysis of uh, holy name and the offenses 10 offenses if you see prabhupada is putting all that in purport completely he is putting all the 10 offenses and everything uh, this way so this is all based upon uh, his commentary what are the 10 offenses and all everything prabhupada has written over here so will not get into that discussion because uh, most of you are aware of these offenses and if you want to know in detail it's subject matter of hari nam chintamani also uh, may, probably some of you are more learned in that than me uh, you must have studied it very nicely like that so i will address the first two paragraphs of prabhupad purport rest of it is uh, thus 10 nama parad that's it you know like that
So in purport, Prabhupada says, uh, generally the persons are materialists who desire to enjoy the fullest extent of material sense gratification. So in the verse, which category is this? What word? Ichadam, exactly. Next to them are the transcendentalists who have attained perfect knowledge about nature of material enjoyment and thus are aloof from such an illusory way of life. More or less, they are satisfied in themselves by self-realization. Who are these? Yoginam, correct. Above them are the devotees of the Lord who neither aspire to enjoy the material world nor desire to get out of it. They are after the satisfaction of Lord Shri Krishna. Huh? So this is what? Nirvidya Manana. Okay, so this is the point. Huh? So Nirvidya Manana are qualified than Yoginam because these are more or less like self-satisfied people. But these are actually satisfied. These are behind the satisfaction of the Lord and serving him um, practically, dynamically, that service is the main aspect in these devotees, huh? like that. So that is why they are put into different categories. Hmm? If the Lord desires, the devotees can accept all sorts of material facilities. And if the Lord does not desire this, the devotees can leave aside all sorts of facilities. That is his point. Huh? So they are ready to take up anything, swarga, naraka, what a Swarga, Narakeshu, Apitulya, Darshinaha, this way. They are not self-satisfied because they want the satisfaction of the Lord only. So in any position, they are fine. Huh? Their desire, especially uh, even staying in the spiritual world, that desire may not be there. Huh? Even though it is spiritual world, if Lord wants in any situation, they are ready to accept that situation like that. So in second para, Prabhupada says how for all of them, this uh, chanting and hearing is the best way, huh? like that. Here it is mentioned that one should constantly chant the holy name of the Lord after hearing it from authorities. This means that hearing from authorities is the first essential. Huh? So shravanam, anushravanam is the first qualification. And then slowly, 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 one is able to uh, progress to the further qualifications like that. Huh? So Prabhupada is saying that. So this process is recommended not only for su successful execution of devotional service, but also even for those who are materially attached. Huh? So even they will have bhakti mishra karma, they will also have some aspect of bhakti in their, uh, uh, in their varnashram, nishkam karma, like that. So that is why, according to Srila Shukdev Goswami, the, this way of attaining success is an established fact concluded not only by him, but also by other previous acharyas. That is nirnitam. Hmm? It is nirnitam. Iska nirnay ho gaya. Aisa nahi nirnay, kya karna hai? It is concluded. It's like that, he says. Therefore, though there is no need of further evidence huh? this way, like that. So process is recommended for everybody, fruity workers, philosophers, or devotees of the Lord, huh? this way. So further Jeev Goswami, he speaks about how Kirtanam means loud chanting is known as Kirtanam, right? Japa means Upamshu level only. Uh, only you can hear. But Kirtanam is the loud chanting, uh, like that. Uchai, uh, this way. While Su Laghu Ucharo Japaha, uh, it is said that. It is Su Laghu Uchar. It is uh, soft chanting, Upamshu, like that. So... Loud chanting is very beneficial, powerful. Haridas uh, Thakur also says that. So, uh, why Kirtan is considered the highest limb? Uh, there was this question yesterday about Kirtan, highest limb. is because Srila Jeeva Goswami says that Kirtan, for entry criteria also, it doesn't have a you know certain entry criteria in terms of only somebody who has become completely uh, antakaran shuddha, such a person can do kirtanam. No, anybody can do kirtanam like that. For smaranam, he says, there is a certain criterion. Huh? You have to have shravanam and kirtanam for a long time. And when your antakaran becomes free from the desires to enjoy, then you are qualified for smaranam. Huh? So smaranam, this is a specific limb of bhakti. It's not talking about general smriti that is there. Now, when I chant holy name, is there some remembrance? It is there, isn't it? So that is a general smriti. When you talk about smaranam, it's a proper cultivation of 
you know practices of smaranam like that huh? there is proper cultivation there there is smaranam then there is dharana there is dhyana there is dhruvanu smriti and then there is samadhi five stages of smaranam have been spoken about so it's a very conscious cultivation on krishna's naam roop guna leela seva it's not a general smriti that is there that is there in obviously in every limb it is there like that so if somebody is not okay. shuchi you know is antakaran his his uh, his uh, heart has a great desires for sense enjoyment he is not free from lust and all such a person is not recommended with smaranam he should focus on the shravanam and kirtanam huh? that is uh, his primary uh, sadhan so after that if somebody is purified then one may take that particular process but still he says that kirtanam is only considered the highest means huh? kirtanam is the most powerful means uh, by smaranam one may benefit oneself but by kirtanam one will benefit also others uh, isn't it by loud chanting of the holy names then he says it is also uh, if you see the muktas the liberated souls kirtan is only seen very prominently in their life uh, he says ganasya eva pradhanyat meaning within the pure devotees uh, the muktas the kirtan is seen very very prominently uh, this particular limb pradhanta se ye dekha jata hai of course there will be some examples of smaranam like prahlad is there that is there but primarily speaking he says that even in liberated associates you will find that the kirtan is the most prominent limb huh? like that so both for siddhas and sadhakas he says this is considered the highest limb no shuddhi vichar at the same time it will uh, transform a person uh, very greatly his his own existence also the existence of others huh? so like that for multiple reasons he says that kirtanam in that also harer nama kirtanam the chanting of the holy names and in that also anu kirtanam the constant so constant chanting of lord's holy name is the highest limb in bhakti it's considered the highest limb like that so that is what is uh, his conclusion in sandarbhas also he says and uh, each one of the limb is qualified to give bhakti uh, to give prema uh, ekanga bhakti anekanga bhakti you know that in bhakti samasya sindhu also each one of the limb is qualified itself to give uh, bhakti so that's why all the limbs can be glorified also uh, but he says that amongst all those limbs which has the maximum power is kirtanam uh, kirtan of the holy names like that so that way otherwise yes archanam also can give perfection we know that parikshita shravane vaya saki kirtane that that particular words so they do have that that particular power but you see the other factors also the factors of entry criteria the factors of qualification adhikar this that uh, and then finally kirtanam as also being uh, the most potent process and he says this is irrespective of yoga don't say that this is only in kali yuga no he says it is irrespective of yoga whether it is satya yoga whether it is any other yoga kirtan is always the most powerful means you know like that so chaitanya mahaprabhu may invest more potency that is very fine huh? but then kirtan still remains the most powerful force okay so rest of it is uh, about the chanting holy names and nama pradas so we'll take it tomorrow uh, after this section things will move very fast because the ashtang yoga uh, description is there which is not a big discussion so i am hoping that mostly tomorrow rest of the chapter almost certain that it may be finished okay hari krishna i am sorry to have gone over time but uh, just in case should we take question or tomorrow we should take one? if in case there is a question on this uh, those may stay back others can move on for the service taruna murthy prabhu prabhu ji you so, are mentioning that kirtan is uh, more powerful so is about what about now we shravanam starting okay. with shravanam yes prabhu yes. so shravanam yes prabhu so shravanam yeah shravanam is the most fundamental prabhu and so shravanam is most essential and fundamental because it is foundational sometimes you will hear that shravanam is the most important isn't it so that is how so 
we are talking in terms of the potency. Uh, what is most potent is Kirtanam. Uh, see, Shravanam also will be useful only if somebody is doing Kirtanam. Isn't it? Otherwise, Shravanam kidar se aega. <laughs> like that. Uh, so, the point is, Shravanam is foundational, Prabhu. And because foundation means it's in the beginning. So, that's why it is uh, very important. It is considered one of the most important. Uh, but amongst all the limbs, the, the power that manifests maximum limb for a jiva, the greatest benefit that manifests is by kirtanam, actually. Uh, kirtanam manifests that greatest power that way, uh, like that. So, in, in that particular sense. So, Prabhupada also many places writes, Shravanam is the highest means. That is, again, more from the foundational aspect. Unless or until one does Shravanam, he cannot progress further. So, just as in Bhakti also, right, there are 64 limbs. So, Rupa Goswami says, first five are considered the most important limb. And he says, uh, Adho Guru Padashtray. Uh, then what? Sa Sadharma Priksha. Uh, uh, then, uh, Krishna Diksha Di Shikshanam. Uh, yes, yeah, Sadhu Vartmanu Vartanam. And Vishnam Bhena Guru Seva. And these five. These five are considered the most powerful, right? But then when we still say, what are the most powerful limbs in 64? We don't say these five. What are they? Those are the other. Sajati, Ashnik, Dashay, Bhagavad Sangha, Association, Chanting Holy Names and all, right? So once these foundational are done, then which limb has the maximum potency? So same with Shravanam also you should see. That once that foundational aspect of Shravanam is done, and one gets established in bhakti to follow the nine limbs of devotional service, which is the highest limb. Then that is kirtanam. Okay. Fine. Any other question? Okay. I think uh, we can stop. <coughs> True, you are mentioning that uh, like the, amongst the in the uh, kirtanam also the kirtanam uh, Krishna kirtanam that is like directly chanting the name of the uh, Lord. So is it that uh, 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 when we say kirtanam, does it mean that only chanting the holy name, or is it that like many times we say kirtan also means the glorifying the Lord in past times? Yeah, so that's what I said. Yes, for. Uh, what I said was, amongst Kirtan, amongst all the limbs of Bhakti, Kirtan is the highest. When you speak Kirtan, then there is Nama Kirtan, there is Guna Kirtan, there is Rupa Kirtan, there is Leela Kirtan. Out of all this, Nama Kirtan is the highest. Okay. So out of Rupa, Leela, that is what you are mentioning when you say glorifying Srimad Bhagavatam. Yes, that is also Kirtan. And when you glorify Krishna's beauty, that is also Kirtan. When you are speaking his pastime, that is also Kirtan. Yes, agreed. But among this Nam, Rupa, Guna, Leela, Kirtanas, Nama Kirtan is the highest. Huh? Vishwanath Chakravarti also says that very clearly in his commentary. And in that also, you know, Kirtan, which is Anu Kirtan, if somebody is doing constant Nama Kirtan, then that is the highest thing actually, huh? that way. Somebody may not be qualified for it, so he may not do it. But we should know that that is the highest thing. Akhanda Harinam, if somebody is able to take, that is actually the most powerful uh, limb of bhakti. Uh, it's accepted. Huh? That is how it is. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right, Prabhu. So I think we'll stop here. Uh, we will continue tomorrow. Granthra Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Srila Prabhupada ki, Nitai Kaur Primanande.